I have been asked to say a few words about Arun K. Tripal. I have already sent a detailed account of the action fought by him, so I will not repeat that. I will limit myself to narrating a couple of incidents which highlight his character and his heroism. A question people often ask is, how come that a young and in inexperienced young officer like Arun, freshly out of the academy, managed to get himself enmeshed in the vortex of a major tank battle. In fact, the biggest tank battle that the Indian Army has fought to date. It happened this way. When Arun joined, war clouds had already started gathering and it was certain that we would soon be involved in an open conflict with Pakistan. Just then, orders came for Arun to be sent on a young officer's course at Ahmedanga. The reason is that the academy only imparts basic military training. Officers on commissioning have to undergo a young officer's course of their respective arm to train themselves and fit themselves for command. Until they do this course, they are not capable of commanding even a basic subunit. In keeping with this, Arun will detail on the next young officer's course starting in Ahmednagar. When Arun was told about this, he was stunned and went into a deep depression. Finally, he managed to muster courage and requested the adjutant to arrange an interview with me. When Arun was ushered in into my office, I looked up and asked him, Yes, Arun? He did not speak. Tears welled up in his eyes. Aankhon mein aansu dhal jala gai. And he remained mum. I told him to sit down, compose himself, and when he was ready to tell me what his problem was, he did that. Then he finally said, Sir, the regiment is going to go. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. If I miss out now, I may never see action again in my life. Please, sir, take me off the young officer's course. I give you my word that I'll make myself fit to command the troop that you give to me and I will not let you down. When he saw me hesitating, he said, please, sir, please. Let me go with the regiment to battle. I did not have the heart to deny him his wish. I knew that if I said no, he would be heartbroken. So I sent for the adjutant and told him, take Arun off the course and run a mini virus course for him in the regiment. And then I turned to Arun and said, Arun, I will test you personally at the end of this course and I shall give you command of a troop only if I think you are fit enough to do that. He looked at me with joy in his eyes and he said, Sir, I will not let you down.
When he had completed the training we organized for him, I did test him and I was fully satisfied that Arun could command a troop in battle and his subsequent actions proved his worth and the assurance that he had given me that he would not let me down. The next episode I am going to relate pertains to the final action fought by Arun. The tank battle between the Pune Horse and Pakistan's 8 Armoured Brigade was reaching its climax. We could see the tanks of the Armoured Brigade forming up for a final and desperate assault onto our brigade to effect the breakthrough that they were seeking. Had they been managed to break through, there would have been carnage. And so, we were deployed, determined to prevent that. As we awaited the assault, which was due to be launched any time now, I got a radio message from Captain Malotra, whom we referred to as Malu, saying, Hello Tiger, my gun is defective. Request permission to pull back and repair it. I said, no. There was a reason for this. In a crucial situation like this, any rearward movement could be misinterpreted and cause a panic withdrawal. Sensing this, I sent out a net call. A net call is a call which embraces all radio stations on that operating on that frequency. We were operating on a regimental frequency and so a net call meant the call was addressed to every tank in the regiment. I said, we will fight it out from where we stand. No one will pull back even an inch. All stations heard that and Arun told his crew, Siyo sahab ka adet suna hai, yahin ruk kar ladna hai. While this was going on, the Park 8 Armored Brigade attack, or rather the counter attack, started off. It was preceded by the heaviest bombardment we had seen so far. During that bombardment, the officer who was deployed alongside Arun, Captain Aftar, uh, sorry, Lieutenant Aftar Elawat, was wounded and out of action. Malu, as I have already narrated, his gun was defective and he could do nothing in the forthcoming battle. In fact, it was an act of courage on his part to stand there, ineffective, take all the flak and not be able to hit back. When you are engaged in battle, in the give and take of the fight, you don't realize the dangers involved. But if you have to stand and watch passively and get all the muck thrown at you without being able to retaliate, it requires courage and nerve. So Malu, Malu, in accordance with my instructions, stuck his ground, but the fact of the matter was that in that vital sector, out of the three who were deployed to defend it, only Arun was now effective and operative. Just then his tank was also hit and caught fire. 
Malu saw the fire and he said, Arun, your tank is on fire, evacuate. Arun turned around and said, Sir, my gun is still operative. I'll get these one souls. Please don't bother about me. His driver, sensing the fire because of the fire alarm in his panel, told Arun, Saab, Aag lag gai hai, thoda piche kar kar Aag buja dein, phir wapat lag jayenge. Arun said, Nahi Praag Singh, tumne CEO Saab ka message nahi suna, ek inch bhi piche nahi jana hai. Yahin thair kar ladenge. And so it happened. The full weight of the attack came in the sector which was held by these three officers and other tanks of Alpha Squadron Kuna Horse and Bravo Squadron Kuna Horse. Charlie Squadron Kuna Horse was subjected to an equally intensive attack by another regiment of the 8 Armored Brigade. So, at this crucial stage, Every tank in the regiment was committed to battle. There were no reserves. It was either they get us or we get them. Arun being the only officer still operative in his sector, started methodically shooting up the tanks as they came. He kept encouraging his gunner Nathu Singh, Achha kiya, Ho hit ho gai hai, Ab ye, ye tank a rahi hai, Isko lagao, And so on. Until all the tanks attacking in the sector had been eliminated, save one. As we found out later, this tank belonged to the squadron commander, Major Nisar. He came straight to where, towards where Arjun, uh, sorry, Arun was and they both literally shot each other. Nisar's tank was brought to an abrupt halt and they evacuated and as he said later, he and the crew lay down between, beneath the tank and hid out during the whole day and at night effected an escape from there. The shot that Arun Tank received killed his operator and mortally wounded Arun. When there were no further tanks in that sector, the attack had been broken up and stopped in its tracks the driver and the gunner, who were the sole survivors now, pulled the tank back, under cover, put out the fire and started examining the two crew members of theirs, their companions, who had been hit. Just then, they assumed that they were both dead, but just then Arun spoke up. He said, Prag Singh, hum jeevit hai, hume paani pilao. Prag Singh and Nathu Singh realized that if they gave him water to drink, it was a bitterly cold morning and he may not be able to withstand it. So they quickly put the boiler on and brewed up a scalding cup of tea. As they brought it to Arun, they realized that he was gone. I would like to end this narrative by quoting a verse from a poem I read long ago. 
the sand of the field is sodden red, red with the blood of a square that broke, the Gatling jammed and the colonel dead, and the regiment blinded by dust and smoke. England's far and honors a name, but the voice of a schoolboy rallies the ranks. Play up, play up and play the game. Arun also was really a schoolboy with a solitary pip on his shoulder, but he did play the game and he played it superbly well.